Okay, so this is um, tutorial three. I'm hoping it's not going to take um, a particularly long time. It did take a long time to get to work, but I want to tell you, I want to remind you about what I'm going to be doing. So in the last lecture, we saw things like this. Yeah, and you, you, you um, what is that? Well, that's the grant thing again. Uh, just to remind you that there are two things working here though, we're using Easel JS and Box2D so that if I were to draw them in tandem with each other, uh, write them, um, show them in tandem with each other, you would see that Grant is um, attached to the box in some way or another. The box jumps and lands on the ground where we have the ground here. But, like I'd said before, I want to try and build um, something for you, a final game. So we've got, oh, these are all the things, I mean, you know, Stack Overflow is a place you want to go on. Um, psychotic Salesperson, this is the final-ish version of it. I think it might have crashed. No, it's not, the game ended because I won. Right, <laughs> anyway. So where are we going to start from? Well, where I'm going to start from is the end of Tutorial 2, where Tutorial 2 Part C was the final part um, in the puzzle. Well, actually, I'm going to do a few things, but let's just remind you where we were. So it's a good place to start. Um, so we're going to Chrome, and we've got a nice little sort of mobile setup with the left and the right, and I'm sure that if we press P we can start the game, yes. So if you remember that's it working, and everything seems to be running along nice and smoothly. Um, however, it is just the box to the debug draw. Um, but yes, it works pretty well. And thankfully for us, the, uh, the new game actually works a little bit better, in fact. Well, not the new game, but the new iteration of the game works a little better. So there's no need to, well, actually I do want to remind you how far along and what everything does. Although you've you've watched it in sequence, there's a chance that this is going to be weeks in between and you may forget stuff. So you, if you remember, that's me trying to, this is me trying to win the game. Um... So I've collected all the letters, and I come to the door, and it takes me to um, level two. And obviously, I think you would probably have some sort of intermediate part there. You know, it's just for a just for a prototype, it should be fine. I think there's only two separate things we have to get. That's one of them there. Oops, and that's one of them there. I don't know what this is. This is oh yeah, so that's killed me. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, so here's the game. Remember the bugs you can see just kind of in it. Okay, so we win in that game over. Okay, so that's the sort of thing we're trying to get, what we're, we're going to go towards in the end. But there's two things we need to do. We need to integrate EaselJS for a start. As you've seen, that we can do that. Then, well, so that's the first thing we're going to do is integrate EaselJS in, in a loose fashion. Then we're going to do it so that it works changing game levels and things because Easel JS is a little different, remember, because that's this is the canvas that we use for Box 2D, you know, when we play this game. It's Box 2D is a canvas that we're moving around in the background. But Easel JS is different, right? It's a stage. So let's have a look. Let's just close all this stuff down. Right, so here we are, tutorial three. We've got V1 is the first place we're gonna go. And oh, let me just show you what we've got here. We've got art, and art has got all of the things that I've needed in there. Now, um, so I made an, another sprite for the bad person. Is it not? Is that the sprite? Yeah, the bad, sprite for the bad person is here, which I took from this one. You know, and you could have done, you could do something similar like that if you want. We've also got the solid thing as bricks, so I've cut things out um, of stuff that I found. I've made them slightly bigger so I don't have to handle the changes in sizes, like skews and things inside the, the game. So that's, I put that in something called art. You don't have to put it in art. 
in JS, I've put examples.js, which we just need for the preloader, and just leave it exactly the same. Index.js is something that we, we're going to be coding on in the libs. So we've got these four things in the libs, and that should be us ready to go. So I'm going to open up index.html. I go so far with this, you know, I don't go too far either because, you know, you've got to try stuff yourself. You've got to push on yourself. But anyway, this is week one. And what does week one actually do? Well, as you can see, we've got the game data. Okay, we've got all the stuff from the game data. Um, we've got our box 2D stuff here. We're setting up the canvas. So you've seen this before. Easel canvas, easel context, box 2D canvas, uh, canvas box 2D context. Remember, we need... We think we need the context for for certain things, but we actually don't. But anyway, we've got a loader, we've got a stage, we've got a W and H, which are width and height. But we've also got canvas width and canvas height, which we require, um, and scale, obviously, uh, in here. So we use canvas width uh, in there. You know, technically speaking, we could probably make that better, but I decided to put it in to keep everything roughly the same. We set up our world. Um, I'm going to set the current level to zero, um, and we've got player life is equal to two, and there's going to be some other stuff. Let's just hold on a second and see how far along we are, um, because it's not it's not such a trivial thing actually. It's quite a is quite a, a piece of coding. I kind of wish I'd gone through it with you, but you know, time is one of those things. So this box two D, that's exactly the layout that we want, and here is my um, attempt. It certainly ain't perfect, that's for sure. It doesn't do anything. You don't move or anything. It's just a layout. It's just a layout of it. Okay, that's all it is. So it doesn't do anything at all. So if I, if I look at the inspector, hopefully there's no errors. So that, uh, there shouldn't be any errors, but there might be. Nope, there's no errors. So basically speaking, in this first attempt, all we've done is match up our things to here. And we do that because inside our game data, we've got width, height, x position, and y x position, and position, and y position of each thing. So let's start off with a timestamp, and a fixed time step accumulator. You just have to put those in. We've got something called a, a psycho, a salesperson, and a bad person, and a bad person E. Let me tell you about this. Psycho. I've written down is uh, probably salesperson E would be a way, way to go. This is easel JS. Because you know, like we have Grant from the last thing. This is Easel JS version. This is Box 2D version. This is Box 2D version. This is Easel JS version. And Delta S, we just put Delta S in. Okay, just put Delta S in. So we've got scale, just 30, step 20, time step equals 1 over step. Then we have an init function where we set up our, all our canvas and contexts and then our stage. And we just put this in, snap pixels uh, enabled. Then we take a width and height based on the stage, which is from, which has a canvas element inside it, which has a width and a height. And then in a manifest, we upload all of the images that we want to upload. Uh, and the, the loader is exactly the same, just make sure it's looking in the right place. And when handle complete is the function we want to call, this is handle complete here. But before we go anywhere, we set up our world. We've done it in this case just because we have, or because I have. That was something I've chosen to do. Um, just to be, so that you're under no illusion, um, I've gone at this with a very prototypical sort of methodology. So I've not taken a static code, I've not built it in a way that um, a solid game developer would build a finished game, I've tried my best to take a concept to help you understand the process of thought in order to make a quick prototype as an idea. Um, so this is the sort of thing I'm doing here just now. I've told you that before. So, handle complete. Well, we can get into this. This is from the old thing. I left it in there to remind me what I was doing um, in case I forgot. Okay, so... I'm creating a, a ground image, and that ground image is from uh, levels from here. So it's going to be that level.ping. Solid, uh, solid image, tree image, and spike image. Um, but, you know, for Psycho, obviously, we've got, we don't need those um, set up earlier. Everything's going to happen inside the handle complete. 
I set up the sprite sheet. So our first sprite sheet is setting up cycle just as we did in the last um, example. So you put cycle in here because that's what we're going to call him. And you set this up. This happened to be already set up. If you check the other tutorial, you'll be able to see what's going on. Uh, other lecture, sorry. Um, you'll be able to see what's going on. Lecture 5, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, there's quite a lot to be done here. Uh, so we've only got stand and run. That's all we really need. Um, and the, the initial point is stand. And we set cycle dot uh, cycle dot scale x is equal to five, and cycle dot scale y is equal to five. I would just work that out by testing. And then at this time, I set up sprite sheet two, and I've got something new. I'm going to call bad person, but I'm going to get that from the here, which is bad person, which you, you saw was that little four um, person thing I took from the main the main uh, file, which is graphicus manic minor. I took things from that. And I set up almost exactly the same thing, but just slightly different numbers uh, for bad person. And um, yeah, they set up the bad person E so that they're standing initially. Um, but, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll run, as it were. And I can add those two things to the stage. The next part, though, and I don't know why all this... Oh, yeah, because... Um, I took it out because I wasn't doing the keys at this point here. So this is the next bit, and the next bit is um, important. So setting up the animation frame. So you just want to create JS dot ticker. So we don't have an animation frame. We have this ticker, um, and these things just put them in. You don't have to call it tick, but it doesn't matter. Tick is fine. Now, if you remember, we have these little functions which create bodies. Um, we have that initial function that creates bodies. You'll see actually in the game that there is no door there. There's actually no door in there. And there's no um, letters. So this was just an example to show you what you needed to do in order to get them, the body set up. So we took all the static bodies, well, except for the door, obviously. And I kept everything exactly the same here, but I just added to it. So in the bit where it says, if user data has own property ID, it just had this in it, which then created a body at the bottom. Yeah. Um, but this time, sorry, this time, we, we say that if the user ID is equal to ground, then we create a new shape. Now, I've put ground E, I've put left W, I don't need to put any of that stuff. I could have had it going, you know, you, you can generalize because we're just creating these bodies. Uh, anyway. So now we're creating uh, these bodies here inside. So we're doing the box 2D body create. We're also adding to, to the stage and we're creating we're creating these shapes, these easel JS uh, images based on the width and height given above. So when we've got ground at the top here for level one, we're getting the width and the height and then we're going to use the X and Y position. Now the X and Y position are... There's a bit of tinkering to be done here to try and get the actual pixel values uh, to match up. Because remember, the, the center for box 2D and the top left, top right, or wherever you've set the reg registered points for the, the sprites, of course. Um, but, but with a bit of tinkering, you can get it just about you know right. And I've got it just about right. That's, that's the way I'm looking at it anyway. So I've just done the same thing. I've eval y, then I've multiplied it from the scale, then multiplied by two, then multiplied by the scale, multiplied by two, because you remember the, the value is divided by a scale and then divided by two, right? Similarly here, it seems only y is um, uh, divided by two, and then we add that to the we add that to the um, the stage. Then we do the same with left. Then we do the same with right. Then we do the same with levels. So it creates levels many times. It doesn't matter about the one there. It just keeps creating levels all the time. Then a conveyor. Now the conveyor we didn't have. Uh, <laughs> we didn't have the image, so I decided just to reuse the the ground image, which is you know it's silly, but I just decided to use the ground image. Uh, then for left change, right change, and fall check. Well, we don't want to see those. Remember, those are like sensors in the background. So we just have the the box to D entry. Then solid 
same thing. For enemy, there's, well, there's different types, so I added some more things to the enemies. Um, I've actually done this with a few things, but with the, with the enemies, um, whether, they're not, whether they're trees and things, I've added that in. So I added the enemies, I've added a name, uh, tree and spike, or spikes. So I added that in, so we got enemy, then we, checked, we check for whether name exists using has on property. Then if the name is equal to tree, then we create a tree. And if the, the name uh, is spikes, then we create a spike. Remember from the spike image and from the tree image above. Um, and these are all for the different images. Similar here we have moving, which again uses ground image. But it's a little bit different this one. So what I had to do was use my noggin. Uh, and this time this does matter. This does matter here. So what I did was I thought, well, I need to access this later. Somehow, I need to access it later, and I do, um, because we need to track each single one of their positions when we stand on them. So by looking up here, we've only got moving, we don't have a specific moving. So I thought, well, why don't I just create an array and store them? So I created the array called moving, and I created the array called moving b2w, so this is box2d web, and this is my ESOJS values, and this move it is moving iteration is what I decided to call that and then I created them all separately so I built it and you can see well okay so I created my shape then I've created a new box to the web one as well and you can see that move it syncs up on each one but what was also interesting is that um, if body is, so in this case here, it's not body that's been created. So you can see here, it's body that's been created. It's not body that's been created. So body will be undefined. So if body's not undefined, then we just add the user data. But if body is undefined, then what we do is, um, or if body is undefined, but move, moving B2W move it is not undefined, then we do moving B2W uh, move it dot get body set user data user data json and then we just add move it and so that's just adding one on um, so we're just adding one to the iterator that's what that means so just so if it's zero then it becomes one and then two and then three so every time it goes through that process so it'll be ten times I think is it ten times fifteen fifteen times no, 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 12, 12 times, what am I talking about? It's four each. Next, I just create the the bot, the salesperson the way I did before, and then the bad person exactly the way I did before. There's nothing else there. Now, if you remember, there's a tick event. So outside the function, there's a tick event which updates the stage, it updates the stage story and updates Box2D um, in tandem. And here's our update function at the bottom here. So it's always updating the stage, and it's updating this function here. And what we do is we set cycle.x. So cycle, remember, is the easel JS, and we set that equal to the x value multiplied by the scale, of course, for um, salesperson, the, the box salesperson, and the same here. But I decided to go for minus 50 because uh, there's something funny going on about the... It was just a hack by me, but I'm sure I can find out what it is. And I did exactly the same here for bad person. And then for these things, for the moving things, well, we set the moving values over a loop. So you can see that the loop, so 0, 0, 0, 0. It sets X and Y, and I just made some changes as well, just a little hack, knowing that they're 30 each, or, or 30 and 29, I think. Or no, 30 and 28 they are. So it's 14, oops, and then 30. That's what I've had to apply. So, uh, just exactly the same thing at the bottom, and as you can see, that works out pretty well. Now, I'm going to give you that code, you can look over it, you can see that it's, that it's applied here. It's not perfect, I'm not saying it is by any means. Um, so let's move to the next thing, and then we'll chat about that. The next thing is version 2, I'm going to get rid of version 1. You know what? I'm going to close it and I'm not going to save it. Right. So, version 2.
and uh, version. Oh, sorry, version two index.js. So, yeah, what are we doing now? Well, we've gone a stage further. Um, you can see we've added door just right there. It's exactly where I am. We've added door. I think I might need some other minor changes, which we'll find out about in a second. Right. Sorry about that. Okay, so everything's moving around. I can I can move. It's pretty reasonable. I hear you say. Now you can see it's not perfect by any means, but you can see that those things are moving down. We've got letters. I just made them. Uh, I just made them these blocks. You can see it's a bit faster, which is pretty weird, but um, you know because it's the same frame rate, it actually makes it almost impossible to play, believe it or not. Um, and things aren't uh, things aren't lined up perfectly either, as you can see. So it actually makes it almost well. In fact, it makes it virtually impossible to play. Um, but I can assure you that oh, you can see the door is also a block. But you know it does work. I mean, it does work almost uh, virtually perfectly. Um, and I have completed it once, and that's not saying anything because I spent pretty much the whole day. Uh, I spent pretty much a whole day building the entire thing from scratch. Um, but you know, I just kept repeating over and over again. So I guess what you could do is just slow everything down. That would probably be one way to do it. It's not everything, but you know, just slow the speed of things down. It's evident that that spike. In fact, I want to see what happens when I. I don't know. I already know. So you can see at least the sprites are working. You can see that, that everything is moving, so everything is synced up. Um, sorry, you know, again, you must watch this and just say, I think he just prefers to play these games, and I, I do actually, it's just, um, I'm gonna do the same with your ones as well. I wouldn't even want to mark them. I just basically just wants to play them all the time. I do the same in the web programming module when people make such cool games. You know, I just forget that it's actually a course of some kind. Oh, I forget that's just to the... So, this is why it's useful to get everything right. Um, oops, I've killed it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, we could easily fix that by just having one thing. Because, I mean, I think the whole thing... You know, I want to show you that, in fact. Uh, let's, just, let's just do that. So, remember, this is good about your game data as well. You can quickly just make it... Um, quickly make it very simple by getting rid of the number of keys so we can... We can just, or letters, just remember I made the mistake by calling them keys. So, oh that's two, I don't want two, I only want one. So, I could do the same thing again. Now there should only be one key, and a uh, letter, sorry, and there is, and it's up here in the corner. So we could do that. And then it takes us to the second level, so it actually works. So we should be very pleased, and there's two. Still has the same bugs as the other one, which is fine. Um, there we go, done. We won, game over. So, what is this all about? It's not quite the end, is it? It's not quite the end. We're not, we're not quite there yet, but we're pretty close. So let's go through everything again. Again, I'm going to try and make this quite short. I'm going to hope that you're going to, you've been following things along. But you can see I'm going to maybe do things differently this time. Well, not too much differently. I've not changed too much from the other the other setup. So, I've virtually everything in here that I need, but I don't use them all. For example, I don't use this. Um, you can see that I've added. Well, I've had moving and uh, moving B two W from before. Um, I've got letters, which is box two D, and letters E, which is Easel JS, and I've got a letter iterator because I need to do something similar. I need to track each one. Why do I need to do that? Well, because just like the other ones had to move, so the actual images had to move, so they had to track the other images, because it's not like the sprites, we can't just do it the same as that, and in, in, in a sense, we can't just do it the same as that. We've got to filter through each one and make sure they're all 
right and in the right position. And after a while, we've got the filter which ones you know, disappear because the moving goes so far down. And like this one, once you collect something, it should disappear. And in fact, if we if we skip for a second and go down to if we remind ourselves about the update, if you remember from the original update, although this has got something in it, when a letter was found, we destroyed the body, or touched, when we destroyed the body straight up, yeah? So we have to do exactly the same thing with EaselJS, which is removing the child, so we have to remember which child that is. So that's why we've done that. Anyway, back to the top, sorry. So that's the coding concept that we're thinking about. So we've got an end game is equal to false, pause, uh, anim we don't need, Left, right, jumping, player, life, uh, number of letters, number of levels, die list, key list, uh, respawn, e write, pause uh, array x, pause array y, and also this ticker thing. Okay, now I decided to create the ticker outside here, which is a little bit different from what we saw a minute ago. But the reason for that is that we can move to our second level because remember what we had to do was we had to set the we had to cancel the animation frame, and then we had to make it null or undefined before we could move on. So now we've got our key down functions, which are literally exactly the same. However, I want to add something here. When you create a ticker, we don't have to completely and utterly destroy it and come up with some amazing hack in order to be able to, you know, we don't have to cancel the animation frame and then uh, make it null and then re, uh, re, inst re instantiate it again. We can simply just pause the ticker, which is good. So this is this ticker as a create.js.ticker. So we've set it up slightly differently. This is the original animation frame that I've just um, put out there. So these things are exactly the same. This is exactly the same as above. Uh, and inside in it, we've got all these things, which is exactly the same. We've got these things here, which is originally from, originally from, sorry, the the mobile version. So it's for the mobile, but we're not going to use that just now, because uh, this is not what we're doing here. So next, if you remember, in the last case, we, we called something called handle complete, I think is what it was. Here, we want to call something called next level, exactly the same thing as before, but we have to call... Um, uh, we have to call this anonymous function, or we have to run an anonymous function which calls next level ba based on current level. Okay, so inside this function we call this. So, just like before, if current level is equal to zero, we ignore all this bit, and then we set um, a translation. But technically speaking, the translation doesn't happen, so we're not even going to talk about that at the moment. All we want to do is be able to move uh, to the next level. So this doesn't work because of what we're doing uh, with the way we're doing it, and this doesn't work because of what we're doing in the way that we're doing it. Okay. So we'll come back to the new level soon. So again, we set up the number of levels uh, letters based on the, the game data. We set up a world. We set up our debug draw. We have... Um, a ground image, solid image, blah blah blah. We've got all that exactly the same as before. The only difference this time, well, apart from the letters, we set up the letters here, and the letters actually call create body. So we simply just have to add a couple of things in, and the two things that we have to add in are, well, for a start, key. But you can see here, key is to do with letter Z and letter it. And letter Z, letter it, and then letters, letter it for box 2D. And you can also see that we apply a value to letter it, that we get back again. So we apply a value to it. So what does that do? Well, if I can go back and show you what's, what's for the letters. The letters are actually got, just got ID key. So now, if I can find that again, wherever it's gone, if I can find it. Yeah, so what this does is it adds to the JSON, okay, the user data JSON, adds that, letter it, uh, and then we add one on. We'll come back to that later. So the conveyor we already know about, um, the door we already know about, I made it the solid image, it's fine. But what's interesting again is this moving, and where I've done the same thing, I've added move it to the user data JSON. So now instead of just, we're class moving, uh, pause 30 and now has val 0 to, to 12 for example 
and we just add these things in down here. Okay, well, for, for the moving part, we add it in. For the other one, it was fine. Right, now what's the reason behind that? Well, well, so first of all, we add all these things in. These things here stay exactly the same. Okay, they all stay exactly the same. Nothing changes, in fact. You can see here when we change level, it's next level, current level, next level, current level. Um, nothing changes whatsoever there. So, we're now at the tick event. And what we say is, if the event dot paused is equal to false, then we, we run update and stage dot update event. So basically, if it's not paused, we, we um, proceed with the game. So here's our update function. All this stuff's the same. Um, the moving part is the same. But down here, where we've got the moving part, where they disappear, you know, when they get to a certain point, we have to find a way in order to, to get rid of the, the image. So anyway, it says if pause is greater than zero, then we spawn a new um, moving platform. But if not, because well, as you can see here, it destroys the body anyway. But we don't want to keep doing that with the images because it doesn't really matter. The images tie up well with each other, well, not the images, but the box and the, the easel JS shapes are, are, we'll call them images, why not? They, they match up anyway. So even if I get rid of one that has value one in the array, then it doesn't matter. It will create a new one at the value one based on the way we've got the setup, right? So uh, you can see here that I've added move val and move val, we get move val from the user data. So that's what we've applied. So um, when we create the array, the iteration zero, this would be zero. This value would be zero, so with that, and it gets passed through. So it creates a new spawn at zero. And then we remove the specific, uh, if the position is less than or equal to zero, then what we do is a new spawn is not made of the box 2D, but also the image is removed. Okay, so let me show you what happens there. So there we are here, it's moving down, we're both moving down, and as you can see, it's, it's pretty much seamless. So the image just moves down with whichever ones they are, but I guess at a certain point, Basically, it's not respawned anymore, and the other ones are eventually deleted. So that's what's happening. Fine. And they're all matched up with numbers. Okay, so it's just a bit of logic in there. That's all it is, just a bit of logic. I'm not expecting you to follow this uh, um, as smoothly or as easily as, as um, or as quickly as I'm saying it. But certainly looking over the code and working at what's going on and looking at the other tutorials and trying to really understand. Looking at Stack Overflow, thinking about the way you're programming. Those things are important. You need to have a look at them and you need to, um, basically you need to really uh, get the grasp of what I'm doing. It's about the logic, that's what it is. I mean, this is it's not AI and things we're not doing here, but it's still logic that we're putting in. Okay, it's still logic. It's still important. The other one that we're doing is the keys. So the keys are matched up. So the keys are matched up. Now it's fairly straightforward that um, if we make a collision between one thing and another, we can say that if it's not the salesperson, then the other thing disappears. That's easy. However, it doesn't work so easy when the collision doesn't exist on the image. There is no collision on the image. We could probably detect for something being, we could come up with some clever way to check for the detected um, um, collision and then get rid of that particular one based on um, position and stuff like that but why do that when we can just match them up in the same way as the move val in the sense that when that collision happens um, that particular letter or object is put into the key list then we check the key list we get the user data and the value out then we remove that particular letter 
letters E, sorry, so key ID is the value of it, and we remove that child from the stage, and we also remove the body from the, we also remove the body from the, um, the box 2D world, so they, they both disappear. So those things are interesting. Um, these things here don't work, the translates, they don't work, that doesn't work, but the other things do. As you can see, the ticker.set pause, ticker.set um, pause is true and false, depending on whether we press a button, remember, from earlier on. Uh, if it ends and the ticker is set paused, and there's our sort of controls and things, and what happens when you win and you lose at the end of the game. So yeah, that's it. Again, I'm going to go back to the start of this, though, because to, to show you what happens when a new game starts. So remember what happens when a new game starts is that if pause is equal to false, well, you've just seen there that when the game, when the level ends, um, you know, with the closing of the door, the, the pause, is equal to, uh, pause is then equal to false, and current level is greater than zero. So we set the ticker, um, the set pause, the ticker is then paused, sorry, then we set the world equal to null, then we remove all children from the stage, so that's every single one of the EaselJS images, then we update the stage, this stuff doesn't do anything yet, it does nothing. You're going to say, you would assume it doesn't do that because of the uh, state of the canvas just now, it doesn't have the outer sort of coating that we had before, but it's nothing to do with that. It's to do with the way that the stage works uh, instead of a canvas. So just for the sake of this, I'm going to give us one more try while we're here. Um, it's just so quick though, you know. I think that's the problem. I've got to get this right. Ah! Sorry. You know what I'm going to do instead? Sounds like a bit of a cop out, to be honest. If I can get it right, that is. Ah! It never worked. It just happens too quick. I fell right through. I know this is annoying you. It's annoying me. It makes me really want to hurt someone, which means I've made a really good game. <laughs> um, it's like the hardest level possible. I mean, it's running at 30 frames per second as well, which is really interesting. I mean, we all already know that it works, I don't even know what I'm doing, but you know, I'm giving it one more go and then we're calling it a day, you probably skip, you'll probably be skipping past this thing, hopefully, yeah, there we go, done. Now you would probably activate some change there to make the well I would because I'm making the game but or this making this game but in all honesty I'm not in all honesty I'm not gonna do that. This is about as far as I'm gonna take it. Fantastic. Done done. So you can see that the flags and stuff are there. So we're gonna there's still one more step for me to do, but it's not what you think it is. I'm not gonna be doing all this fancy stuff that you're gonna to have to do to make your prototype even better. So what's the next stage? Well, the next stage is the final stage, which is mobile. Um, and it's kind of like this. I just haven't put the buttons in. You've seen how to put the buttons in. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so let's go to version 3. And I, You know what? I'm actually very happy with it. You know, as a, a basic prototype to show you in a tutorial, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Um, I mean, you guys might not be, but um, I mean, if I if I were you guys, I'd be you know taking notes of this thing as as a way that you you should have your game set up. But anyway, 
Um, here's what it does. It does exactly the same thing as you saw before. And you know what? You're going to love it because it's actually a lot easier to do this way. Um, not to play the game, obviously. It's still just as difficult as you can see. Oh, I ruined it, that one. You see, it's still got the bug in it. Your one won't have bugs in it, though. You'll, you'll spend a lot of time doing it. Hopefully, I just don't have the time. I'm very, very annoyed about that. Ah, wait, you've seen it enough times. Last one. But you know, at least you can see that it is working perfectly, and I think that's the whole point of what I'm trying to get across, is it's working fine. And it's even working less buggier than before, which is another testament to Easel Jess, in fact. You know, it really is a testament to Easel Jess. Okay, so I mean, there you go, it pauses. Things aren't quite perfect, but it's okay. Now, what is basically going on? Well, and you know what, we need to prove that it goes to the next level as well. Well, we know that it goes to, well, yeah, we know that it goes to the next level. Um, that's not what this is all about. This is about the, the mobile thing. So these things are going to come into their own, and pretty much that's that's about it. So things are about to change. These things aren't needed anymore. Well, you know, except for numbers and things. Uh, but they really aren't needed anymore. So what's the only difference? Well, really, everything is really the same now. Um, the only difference is that we use stage X and stage Y. That's it. Stage X and stage Y. So stage X zero because we want to stay on the left hand side in stage Y we go down by 333 and that's it here same thing stage X equals 0 stage Y equals uh, minus 333 I wonder what happened if I just left that out I think in the old case I had to do it because I had to retransform the I had to retransform stuff, didn't I? Yes, that's all I did. We did. Okay, good. Yeah, it works. It works fine, in fact, without, um, sorry, I just put into that bug mode, uh, the test mode again. Yeah, so it worked. So technically speaking, I don't need that second one. We just needed that because I needed to set, if you remember, the, the nightmare next part was because uh, of the canvas and the context. Um, I needed to do um, a, a reset transform and then clear the rect, whereas in this case, I don't need to do that because I just use, use stage dot remove all children and stage dot update. So there's a stage dot x equals zero, stage dot y equals minus three hundred thirty three. That should be fine. Um, and the rest of it should all be virtually exactly the same. And it gets even better as well. It gets it gets much better. Um, this is going to be the shortest one of all time. In fact, well, things are going to run out of battery soon, so I better go and plug it in. In fact, I'm going to stop just now. Yes, I uh, can't remember what I was getting at there. Oh, yeah, so, I mean, I was basically showing that this was working. See what happens when I do it now? Yeah, of course. See, yeah. Give it one last try. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Right, okay, so basically to make it move around like this, if you remember the other way, it was it was quite difficult, but you can see that it works pretty well. So let's at least get to there. I'm not actually playing the game this time, uh, and just want to get to the top to show you that it works all the way to the top. If I can actually get there without dying. Um, yeah, so there you go. So there we are, we're at the top, you know, and it looks pretty good. Um, wow, I did it. No way, I did it. Again, been practicing, huh? Yes. Uh, anyway, you can see that it works pretty well. In fact, it works better than the other thing, um, which was a little bit buggy at times. 
And that's okay. Well, it's, it's very good. And how does that work? Well, that's what I really wanted to show you. Well, inside up uh, inside update, we have these things, which is exactly the same. Remember, 333.5 and 666.5. Um, and these values were taken from the size of the, the view. Um, and normally inside there, it was something like this. Um, so it was like easel j. It was um, context.translate minus sx up here, zero, because it was an x. And this one down here, it was zero minus sy. We still have the minus sx, but this time it's got to be relative to the stage x. So stage x is then going to be equal to whatever the stage x is minus sx. So this is this is still a change as a translation. This is just expresses the change. So stage dot y, stage dot y minus sy. It's really quite straightforward. In fact, you just do a test output, and that's that. Nice and easy. It's you know it's even easier than than it was before. You know what's great as well is that when you just die, um, so when you you fully die, um, as a player, um, you you can just simply set it back to zero minus three three three. You don't have to do, um, all the crazy stuff about having to reset the transform and things. You can just set it straight back to where you want to go. Um, the the, the original starting point. So you could even put now these things inside your. Or, or you can calculate them, I suppose, depending on the size of the screen. Now that takes me to my next point. When it comes to the assignment, which is what you all want to know about is the assignment. Um, not in the next folder, so the next folder will be week four. You don't have to do these in weeks, by the way, just to let you know, because there's a lot of materials in there that could be slightly over that. Um, but I would say you should probably run at this. You should run at it. Um, you know, do everything as quick as you can. But in week five, there's going to be like a, a sort of help guide to the assignment about what's expected because the assignment will have, I mean, okay, it's a report about marketing. It's also making a prototype. So it's not going to be, either of them is not going to be massive. But for what you do on, on both of them, it's going to make a big difference. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I want, this game is to be a bit mobile, you know, because... When it comes to marketing games and things, I mean, it's quite hard to market them otherwise, but, you know, we've already seen this, um, this sort of setup here. I want it like this. I want you to put buttons in there. Um, I want you to design the way that it looks, which we're actually going to get to in the next one. Not, we're not actually really going to get to... I should probably take that back. Um, we're not going to get to that at all. But what we are going to have is... What you're going to design, which we've done already, was to put buttons in. So if you remember, it's in here. So there's your buttons here. Those do the same sort of things. You can stick them straight in. Um, I mean, we could probably do that just now, but we're not going to. Um, you can obviously go back and just try it yourself. It's really not that hard. You just have to put the buttons in uh, and layer them on the top. Just exactly the same way as you did before. In fact, yeah, it's really straightforward, in fact. Um... But there's other things we've got to think about too, isn't there? So we're going to look at my... Well, we're going to do that in the next thing anyway. And that's the, the sort of route that we're going to go down in the next instances to, to deal with all the tiny little things. This is actually a really good interpretation of this game, in fact, you know. Well, I'm very pleased by it. I'm fairly pleased with this. It did seem that there was a wee buggy thing going on a minute ago, and I want to make sure that it doesn't, doesn't happen. So, because if it does, then I've got to try and fix that for you. No, that's fine. No, that's okay. Weird. Oh yeah, I've broken the guy, that's why. So remember, you could need to get rid of the bugs in your game. So I'm just checking something here. Yeah, that's fine. So this one here seems a little bit lower, doesn't it? 
so it's obviously there's something not quite right, but I mean I think that it's just to do with the yeah, so you can see there still is a minor bug going on down here. That's okay. Well, not really. I think that that's okay. I mean, I don't, I don't see what. No, I think, I think it's fine. It's just that everything's pushed up just slightly, as we, as we know that it is. Okay. So anyway, what my point is is that the next stage, the next thing that we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial is going to be things like life. Um, things like sounds, we're going to put sounds in, because you need to do that, you need to put some sounds in. Um, sort of contact screens, um, no sorry, splash screens, loading screens, menu screens. Um, you're going to have to think about those things in terms of the game design, so what do I mean by that? Well we want to look up Manic Miner again, so Manic Miner, um, Manic Miner, um, there's Manic Miner here. Uh, so I might just try and get a hold of this and make that my loading screen or my menu screen. I'm not going to try and get the sound. Cause I'm probably never going to be able to get it anyway. Um, yeah, you know, it's not actually that bad. I mean, mine runs a little bit too quick, but it's not actually that bad. It's pretty decent, in fact. Obviously, I could take a lot more time over it, but it's not that bad. Does my bad guy move? No, he doesn't move. Oh, I know why. Um, it's really noisy in my ear. Um, I'm not sure why it's not working. It's fairly annoying. Well, Weird. So I'm going to stop that a minute and then come back to it a second. It's really annoying. I wonder why it's not working. Hmm. I mean, it should technically just run exactly the same. Weird. Hmm. I'm going to have to fix this. I'm quite annoyed about that. 
Anyway, quite annoyed about that. Why is that not working? I'm going to have to fix that at some point. Anyway, we know that it works. I'm just not sure why it's not working today. Weird. Hmm. Look into it. Anyway, um, so for the next time, what was I getting at? Yes, so if you remember the, the details. So when you get, when you pick up the five different keys, you get 100 points each. Um, I can't remember what, so the, it's the high score. And then when you get through the next level, you must get like a 1,000 or something. So let's see what happens when we've done it. We've got 500 so far. We've got this amount of air. So it's just the air directly is what the, the value is, what, what the number is that you get, so whatever's left. And I think I worked it out to be something, I can't remember um, what it is. But that was about a thousand there at half, so I'm going to look it up and see what I'd, I'd written down. I'd, I mean, I've evaluated the game, I just can't remember what it is, and it doesn't really matter in, the, in this instance. We've also got these little lives here, so we probably want to mention that there's only a couple of lives left. Um, so we've got to think of ways to do that because we've got this space here um, we've also got the splash screen, the menu screen so this is the menu screen um, well actually that's, that's a splash screen in fact I don't think there is a menu screen I think you just go straight into the game which is fine with me so I might have to put some sort of menu on there I mean there's a good chance I won't even put that in there um, I'll, I'll just literally just uh, make it work in the next assignment but just now I'm going to go away and I'm going to go, sorry, it feels like I've wasted your time. I'm going to go and try and fix the problem that I was having. Hmm. Okay, just to let you know, it was fairly simple to solve. Basically, um, I had some sort of conflicting things going on. So what I did was I just set up the sprite to run all the time. And then I took out, down here, I took out... The, the going to, to run thing and just let it run itself. Uh, so I've got it in here, so I hope this doesn't break it in any way. No, it doesn't, so it's fine. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, we've actually got it working properly. It's, it's a fully fledged game now. So that's it. Game on. Don't know why I just said that. Um, yeah, I did the hard bit there. Should be dead by now, I think. Oh my God, this is fast. In some ways, superior to the original. And I uh, might well uh, pay the pinion. Oh, it's very annoying. Anyway, it's fixed. As we can see here, there's a little guy, a little bad person, whatever it happens to be. Done. One more try while you're here. Right, that's me. Anyway, see you for the next tutorial and lectures.